Hello students, a warm welcome to our RS Kalaria YouTube channel. Today in grade 6 science, we are going to learn chapter number 15, air. Yes, air, a very important in our life. Air plays a very important in our life. Without air, we cannot respire, isn't it? We cannot survive, we cannot live without air. So, air is very very important in our life. You have learned something about air in chapter number 9 that air is necessary. But have you ever seen air? Anybody has seen air in this world? No, it is not visible. But you can feel it, isn't it? In summer also you need a cool air, isn't it? From AC, from fan and so on. But from where does this uh, air exist. It exists in nature. It is transparent. You have learned the word transparent. Transparent means a uh, things through which we can see the things properly. Through which the light can pass easily. So we can see the things easily. So air is transparent. We cannot see air but we can feel it. And air is very very important in our life. Yes, you might have seen a small children playing with firki. Even students, you can also make your firki by yourself. And when you can, will place it under the fan, it will rotate. Yes, because with the help of air, the movement is there in the firki. Without air, it will be in the rest position. You have learned the rest, isn't it? Stationary position not in moving position. So, air is very much important in our daily life. First of all, we cannot survive only without air because we respire and for that oxygen is required and oxygen is present in air. So, without air, we cannot respire only. Now, I have also told you that uh, with the help of Firki, uh, you can see that how the air plays an important role. The movement of Firki is due to only air, isn't it? So students, you might have heard about the weather cock. What is a weather cock? It is a device which shows the direction in which the air is moving at that place. Now, is air present everywhere? As we cannot see the air, as air is not visible, how can we confirm that air is present or not? Science always needs a proof. So let us perform one activity. Here I have one empty bottle, isn't it? And one container which is filled with water. Now you can see that when I dip the open mouth of this empty bottle inside it, you can see, see bubbles are arising, isn't it? See, many bubbles you can see. So, how does this bubbles have come? Again, this is empty bottle. When I dip the open mouth inside the water filled with bucket, you can see the tiny droplets. Can you see the droplets? It is clearly visible. Now, there was no droplets neither in the bottle nor in the bucket. So, from where does this uh, bubbles have came? Yes, it shows that whatever air was present inside the bottle is coming out and that space is occupied by the water. So, bubbles are showing the presence of air which is present inside the bottle. So, this way we can prove that air is present everywhere on the earth. So, students, now we come to know that bottle which I have shown you was not empty, isn't it? It was containing air. So, when air come out, the bubbles was formed and that space was occupied by the water, isn't it? In the bottle. Now, what is this air made up of? We cannot produce air and there are no factories of air. It is a natural. But what does this air consist of? What is present in the air? Yes, in air uh, there are many many places. Air is a mixture of gases. It has mass in occupied space. That we have just seen that air occupies space. Now it is mixture of what? It is a mixture of 78% of nitrogen, 
21% of oxygen and 1% other gases, dust, smog and water vapor. During sunny days also, when the sunlight is entering and in your home or at school or at any place, you might have seen that through the beam of that sunlight, when the light is falling, you might have seen many many dust particles are seen, isn't it? So, air is a mixture of gases and major part of air consists of nitrogen. Seventy-eight percent of air is nitrogen and twenty-one percent is oxygen. Yes, oxygen is very very important for us as you know very well. And one other percent is of other gas, dust, smoke and even the water vapor is also present inside the air. So, now you have understood that how the air plays an important role in our life and what does the air consist of. by space and it is present everywhere. Now let us perform one another activity. See here I am having two candles. Isn't it? I have light up the candle. One I am covering with the glass. Okay. You can see clearly that uh, two candles are running and now one is extinguished. As soon as I cover with the glass it is extinguished. Why it has happened? Because for burning, air is very much necessary. As you have seen that, see this candle is burning. Again I am repeating. Both the candles are burning. Okay. One I am covering with the glass. Now you can see. You can see that. You can see that now this candle is extinguished. Clear? So, because air is not present, or uh, enough amount of component, air is present but enough amount of component which is required for burning is occupied. So, now the candle gets extinguished and still this candle keeps on burning, isn't it? Because the component inside the glass which supports burning is limited. Okay, air is there but whatever component was present inside was limited and most of the component was used up. So, by the burning candle. So, it just extinguished. Clear? So, this proves that the component of air which supports burning is known as oxygen. I hope you are clear. I have shown you that how oxygen is important for the burning so students you have learned that oxygen present in air is required for burning process isn't it so oxygen which is very much important for the burning it supports the burning now nitrogen the presence of some component in the air which does not support burning the major part of air is nitrogen okay so air was present inside the glass but there was what lacking oxygen was used up okay so proportion must be uh, more then only burning can be continued okay so whatever uh, oxygen was present it was occupied so now it got over and so the candle extinguished even carbon dioxide, uh, when you visit uh, some place or uh, when you attend any function, you might have seen that many people are gathered over there. And if the room is closed, all the windows and doors are closed, you feel a suffocation. Why this suffocation take place? Because people inhale, isn't it? When the people inhale, it takes in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So, whatever proportion is present in the room will change. The what happens? Proportion of carbon dioxide will go on increasing because everything is closed and people are uh, giving out carbon dioxide and whatever amount of oxygen as you have seen in the glass activity. Isn't it? That till the amount of 
so you feel very much suffocation because the proportion of carbon dioxide goes on increasing in the room and whatever amount was present of oxygen was taken by the people so people feel suffocation you have seen in the glass activity isn't it till the uh, amount of oxygen was present the candle was burning as soon as the proportion of oxygen reduce ha huh? the candle extinguishes in the same way when the amount of oxygen will get reduced in the closed room people feel suffocation now uh, dust and smoke is also present as you know that uh, in a sunny days you might have seen the light okay entering the room it is containing some of the dust particles now you have also seen that uh, traffic policeman is wearing a mask isn't it why he is wearing a mask because to protect himself from the dust particles and smoke it is very much harmful for the health of a people isn't it the smoke and dust particles we cannot separate it but as you know student that uh, mucus and tiny hair are present inside the nose of a person what is the role of this mucus and tiny hair it doesn't allow the dust particle to enter inside the uh, respiratory system it doesn't allow it to enter the body so this way it filters the air it doesn't allow to enter the body and air is get filtered with the help of tiny hair and mucus which is present inside the air but when you <coughs> go to a area which is highly polluted you might have uh, heard in delhi there is a more pollution traffic po due to more traffic isn't it more gases and uh, are released which is harmful for the health of a person so person should live in a place where the clean air is available and good amount of oxygen is there because the smoke and dust particles harms the body it affects the health of a person and even the variation we have learned that uh, mostly 78% of nitrogen consist by the air and uh, 21 by 21% by the oxygen and remaining 1% is a uh, dust and smoke <coughs> now at some place there is a more amount of dust particles if you visit a garden it is a very clean isn't it and very fresh you feel over there because there is no pollution but if you go near the industrial area uh, the smoke is released isn't it even the chimneys are fit why it is fit at the certain height because whatever air or whatever uh, smoke is coming out will directly go up it will not harm the land area so that is the intention that chimneys are fit in the factories so we should always try to inhale a pure air isn't it a smoky air and with dust particle will harm our body as uh, we have learned that plants and animals take in oxygen for respiration isn't it so oxygen will go on decreasing so what will happen but oxygen is required for the process that you are aware only but plants produce oxygen during the process of photosynthesis as the oxygen is occupied by the us but plant will also release oxygen when when it prepares the food that is the process of photosynthesis so again the proportion of oxygen will increase so it is advisable to plant more trees because trees will give out oxygen and that oxygen is very much important for us isn't it for us for all the animals for all the living beings so if plants are there it will produce oxygen clear okay now we have seen that air is present everywhere okay uh, with the help of the 
bubbles activity by the bottle i have shown you that uh, as the bottle was empty and when it was dipped inside the container filled with water the bubbles were formed so in the same way uh, you can also find out that how the water is uh, sorry air is present in the soil now when you take a lump of soil in a beaker and when you add water to it you will see again bubbles as you have seen in the water the, these bubbles indicate the presence of air because as we enter the water as we pour the water the air present inside have to come out because for in the beginning we have learned that air occupies space isn't it so the space which was occupied by the air is now taken by the water so water will occupy that space and air will come out even when you might have seen that if your mama is preparing tea okay or when you keep uh, only water for boiling you take one container and take some amount of water inside it when you keep on the heat okay when you heat the water you might see that tiny bubbles are on the surface of the container okay on the surface at the bottom of the container why this is there because water itself turns into vapor and finally begins to boil isn't it now the uh, bubbles are formed because water uh, is converting into vapor and it is coming out in the form of vapor we have learned in chapter number 8 and 9 that even the animals living in water they also take the oxygen but they take uh, the oxygen which is dissolved in water so because as the oxygen is present in water it will take the dissolved oxygen which is present in the water <coughs> even the uh, uh, organisms which are living in the soil also respire they also need the oxygen so i have told you that even the soil contains the air when we pour the water inside it the bubbles are formed and this shows the present of air inside the soil now what happen during the rainy season when it rains heavily isn't it when it uh, when it rains heavily the water which is entering <coughs> the burrows uh, of the organisms living in the soil huh that will occupy the space of air so air will come out so they have to also come out to respire so at that time especially we might have seen that in monsoon season the earthworms are seen more because they come out from the land uh, from the soil because as it rains the water enters the soil and the air comes out and there will be less amount of oxygen so for respiration mostly organisms come out during the rainy season so this way you have come to know that air is present where everywhere isn't it we have seen that air is present in soil it is present in water everywhere even in the empty space so can you give the property of water yes water is uh, sorry uh, can you give the property of air air is transparent air is colorless air occupies space these are the some property of air isn't it okay now how the air is important for breathing that is important that we have learned but also if you want to fly a kite isn't it without air it is not possible even air helps the birds and insects to fly without air the birds and insects can not fly air also helps in the movements of yachts and gl gliders isn't it during sailing also the air is very much important air also helps in the dispersal of seeds yes so in planting also air is very very important so air 
also plays a very important role in the dispersal of seal now you might have also learned about the windmill isn't it what is the windmill uh, especially in gujarat uh, near this uh, mithapur dwarka jamnagar side you might have seen many many windmills now what is the important role of it how is windmill useful for us use of windmill what is the use of windmill it generate the electricity even it is used to draw water from tubelets isn't it it is used to draw water from the tube wells so wind is very much important uh, windmill is very much important to generate electricity now how does this windmill uh, work windmill cannot work without the wind the wind makes the windmill rotate okay without wind windmill cannot rotate and if windmill doesn't rotate the electricity is not generated now windmills are also used to generate electricity air we have learned that air is important okay for this windmill so air is important for windmill for flying the glides for this gliders for sailing yachts all this and it is also very very important for the dispersal of seeds so air is not only important for the breathing but only not for the respiration but it is important in each and every place so that is the importance of air and it consists of 78% of nitrogen 21% of oxygen and 1% other gases like like yes like carbon dioxide smoke and even water vapor is also present in the air so you might have enjoyed this session so you come to know that how much important is air for us and what is air okay thank you have a good day bye bye